blue. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 126.7 ready pounds. As a professional, he has an impressive record, including 35 victories against five defeats with one about even. 25 of his victories come to you by way of a knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, damas y caballeros de Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, introducing Horacio El Violeto Garcia. And introducing his opponent, but across the ring, out of the blue corner. He stepped in the ring tonight wearing the red trunks. When he stepped onto the scale, he weighed in officially at 126.4 ready pounds. Tonight, he enters the ring with a record consisting of 18 victories against just one defeat. Five of his victories come to you by way of KO. Ladies and gentlemen, the fighting pride of Salinas, California, introducing Ruben Drabia. Who wants to get your record chart? Rory Kais Jr. with the final instructions. All right, gentlemen, you received the instructions in the dressing room. Know what I expect. Good clean fight. Ya recibieron las instrucciones con la pelea limpia. Golpe legales, legal punches. Here for you, legal punches, here for you. Touch gloves, glove to both of you. Buenas tardes los dos. See how these featherweights match up. Villa is the younger man. Horacio Garcia has a slight height and reach advantage. This should be a good one. Our main event here, Thompson Boxing. At the path to glory here at the Double Tree in Ontario. Standing room only. Thank you for watching wherever you may be on this Friday night in Southern California. At the Durant, Doug Fisher, and you, Ruben Villa, 18 and 1, of five KOs. He's in the red trunks of Southpaw. Haven't seen him in a while. His last fight, Doug, El Vaquero Navarrete, who's always a tough out. We see what he can do to people in that fight. Ruben stepped up, took on it, a chance for the title. Came up short, but what are we gonna see tonight? That's the big question, the inactivity from Ruben Villa. Yeah, you wonder what's gonna be going through Villa's mind when he takes a hard punch, because he's in against a heavy-handed stalker. And a guy with world-class experience, a guy who's traveled to other parts of the world to fight, you know, former champions and such. And he, he goes the distance with these guys. I mean, he had a, 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 a hotly contested 10-rounder with Carl Frampton, who was fighter of the year of uh, 2016. He fought Frampton in 2017. Frampton elected to fight him and, and learned real quickly that Garcia, he comes to fight. And he can, he, you know, he can take it as well as he can deliver it. Before Canelo moved his camps to San Diego, Horacio Garcia was in the Canelo camp, training with Eddie and Chepo Reynoso. That's when Canelo fought Khan. Back in 2017, we're opening up the T-Mobile. Horacio was there. Horacio Garcia, El Violento, 35, five and one, 25 kilos, built himself up. As Doug mentioned, fought Carl Frampton, he fought all over the world. He has the experience on his side. How much is left in his tank? A few years ago, we would have said nothing. Yeah. But he came to Thompson and easily beat Isaac Zarate. Found the birth, found the juice. Uh, he said after that fight, last uh, November, I believe, he, he took three days off, went back to the gym, has been in the gym the entire time. He's going to need that. He's going to need his reflexes because we're seeing that he's having trouble dealing with the, the very fast and sharp jab of Ruben Villa here in the opening round. Garcia is cut on the left eyebrow. We'll ask Caiz Jr. if it was a cut based off a punch or a headbutt, which happens at times when you have the southpaw fighter. Right. Garcia is swinging heavy with his left. He's a good body puncher. But he's at his best when he's able to back his opponent up. That's where he does his best work when his opponent's back is to the ropes. 
V is very good at punching on the fly and keeping his backs off the ropes. Big crowd here for Ruben Villa. Thompson Building Materials, Orange, Fontana, Lamita, Camarillo, San Diego, Ripon, and Sacramento. All right, so just spoke to Raul Caiz Jr., the referee. That cut, the result of a headbutt. I'm getting a better look of it right now. It is at the edge of the eye, so it doesn't look like it's gonna bleed directly in the eye. It's not on the eyelid. It's not underneath the eyebrow. It's at the far corner of the left eyebrow, so it should sort of bleed down his, uh, like his cheekbone. Shout out to the side Mike. of the face. Shout out to Mike Brown in Auburn, California. Here for Ruben Villa's return. Mike, we'll see you in Sacramento. Absolutely. Good opening round for, for Ruben. Yeah. Ruben Got did this entire camp in Salinas. In the past, he had gone down to Robert Garcia's gym in Moreno Valley. This one all in Salinas. He's doing exactly what he needs to do. He needs to work his jab. You don't, ba you don't back straight up against a fighter like Horacio Garcia. You want to circle him. And Ruben understands that. We've talked a lot about the professional experience of Garcia. Villa brings a lot of amateur experience. Yeah. He started boxing at age five and had an extensive amateur career. Whereas Garcia turned pro, I'm sorry, started boxing at age 15 and learned as a professional over the years. The Mexican way where yeah. you get gloves, you think you're pro immediately. Yeah, first on like the Guadalajara level, then on the, the Jalisco state level, and then the national level, and then he's fighting in America and Belfast and Japan. And gaining his experience that way. Oh. Horacio Garcia had a couple fights against a guy we know very well, club show extraordinaire, Jules Ogin. Right, o Ogin actually upset him in yes, an eight rounder did. the first time. <laughs> And then he came back and avenged him. He's like, all right. And that was another example where Orazo Garcia was telling me, he's like, I just wasn't into it mentally. Where I was burnt. Now he took that almost to your break. Still kept going to the gym to train. But he said, knowing I could eat what I want, knowing I could just, hey, if I don't want to spar it, I don't have to. The rebirth, the energy, recharge of the batteries. And here he is now in the main event tonight. It's important for a fighter to fig figure that out because for a fighter to do what he does, the fighter has to want it. If you don't want it anymore, you're never going to be at 100%. Yep. And we're seeing here, as dialed in as Villa is, he, he definitely wants it. He wants to get back what he lost. And you see Villa, the back of his trunks, the fields. The Salad Bowl representing Salinas. He's a great role model for that community. Good left hand from Villa. Snapping that jab. He doesn't look like a fighter who had a big layoff. No, no ring rust whatsoever. He's very sharp. And it's not just his technique and his speed, it's his timing. But he's boxing exactly as he should box, which is giving Garcia angles. There you see, Mother is what they called her. Sylvia, Mother Via passed away. So they left the chair for her tonight, honoring her memory as she passed away not too long ago. So they had a 10 count here, Thompson Boxing. Classy move, honoring Ruben's family. You know, some of the comments are mentioning, you know, in the amateurs, mind you, it's the amateurs, but Ruben had bigger over Shakur Stevenson. You know, and uh, 
It might be the amateurs, but at the end of the day, you beat them. Yeah, twice. Yeah. Are they different people yet now? Yeah. Yeah. But at the end, it's, you know, Shakur went to the Olympics. Ruben was on the Olympic path. Here well, he is. A Shakur had to beat Ruben yep. to get that Olympic spot yep. on the team. Shout out to Artie Palulo and Banner Boxing. They co-promote Ruben Villa. The legend Artie Palulo. Always love talking with Artie Palulo about boxing. Garcia's got to let his hands go. Whenever he can get Villa's back against the ropes or, or, or Villa in a corner, he's got to go to the body. Here he is as a pro, 18-1, Ruben Villa trying to climb back into the mix at 126 pounds. He's still rated, he's still in the rankings. But he wants to recapture that mojo that he yes. had because he had tremendous momentum going into that, that shot for the vacant WBO featherweight title. He had so much momentum that a lot of boxing insiders picked him to beat Emmanuel Navarrete, yep. who since has done nothing but win and, and look formidable and climb to the very top of the featherweight rankings. You know, and Navarrete, the fight that he had with Joette Gonzalez. Oh, wow. Joette, we know wow, but Navarrete just goes and goes and goes. Good jab by Villa. Body. Uppercut by Villa. Yeah, I was gonna say that Garcia Looks like he's, he's open for the uppercut because he's keeping that high guard and he leans forward. So he's kind of covering his peripheral vision because he's trying to protect his eye from getting, you know, cut even more than it is. But the way he's leaning in, he's right there for the uppercut. And man, Villa is looking super sharp, razor sharp. Villa's footwork is excellent. Yeah. Always been one of his keys to his game. Yeah, he's pivoting on that front foot. He's utilizing lateral movement, but he's not running around. He's not running around the ring. He's just being careful not to stand in front of Garcia. And you know what? That's a lesson learned from that title shot against Vaquero. Vaquero caught him with that, that crazy uppercut. Caught him again in the fourth round. I think it was the second round of the fourth round where he went down. And you know, he showed us some character in kind of dealing with that, fighting through that, and then sort of regaining his composure and his, his technique late in that fight to win a few rounds. More blood from the left eyebrow of Horacio Garcia. And you can tell it's bothering Garcia. Garcia's thinking about it, because Garcia's not letting his hands go. At all. <laughs> Solid three rounds for Ruben Villa. Make sure you download the Thompson Boxing app. Android and iPhone is available for you. Got content on there, your fights, the pictures. Get on the Google Play, also the App Store. That's Ruben Villa. The blood, that's not his. That's a good corner right there with Max. Max Garcia in front of him. That's the old man, and he's all about conditioning, getting the fighter physically ready. Sam Garcia, he's the boxing brain, so he's gonna be talking about strategy and making sure Villa, you know, uh, sticks to the game plan. And Henry Ramirez is a cut man. Yeah, that's, a, that's a nice trio right there. A lot of experience. Yeah, good corner there. As we head to the fourth round, he saludos Osvaldo Molina. Que está en el Festival Olimpico y Juegos Nacionales del Gym Picudo. Saludos Osvaldo, buena suerte. Good luck to you. His, man, his dad's in the corner. Villa looking strong through three. Garcia, Horacio Garcia was cut in the first on a headbutt. But this has been all room of Villa early on. And Horacio Garcia winging those punches. Villa doesn't look gun shy at all. Nope. He's uh, slipping some of these punches, but he's blocking others. Not neglecting his jab. Controlling the fight, being first is Ruben Villa in the red. 
Yeah, and it is, his offense is varied as well. He's not just head hunting, he's tapping the body. He's throwing power shots. He gets back on the stick and back on his move. But he's staying in the pocket. It shows a lot of guts. And I think what Garcia needs to be doing, he needs to be throwing body shots. He's not hitting the head. Good combination from Ruben Villa. Garcia right now is like a sitting duck. He's not going anywhere. Yeah, he's just he's just standing in front of him, but he needs to apply effective pressure. And what he might need to do is just kind of rush inside and try to tie him up and then try to grapple a little bit and just like, like physically try to push Villa back. Because what he's doing right now is not working. Garcia keeping his guard very high. But again, this is very important. Villa does not back straight up. He moves to the side. He's orbiting Garcia. And not getting touched. More blood from the left eye of Horacio Garcia in the black trunks. Yeah, the, the, the face of Garcia is getting, it's getting marked up. It's getting touched up. It was a result of a headbutt, but the rest of it's been punches from Ruben Villa. Very clean and crisp punches from Villa. He's not a power puncher, but he's, he's an accurate puncher. It's like Villa sees the punches coming at him in slow motion. As we... Wind down in the fourth round. Ruben Villa looking strong here. Join this, drinking some Don Julio, out a boy, baby, out a boy. As we head to the fifth round, oh, Ruben Villa. Does not look like a fighter who hasn't fought in almost 19 months. If you're Violento Garcia right now, you gotta make it ugly, you gotta rough him up, but you can't catch him. Look at the footwork from Garcia. Flat, Villa, bouncing around. Hundred twenty six pound division, Doug. Who are the players? Well, obviously Navarrete, WBO title holder. Um, Josh Warrington regained the IBF title uh, with a rematch stoppage of Kiko Martinez. But the guy who knocked out Josh Warrington, Mauricio Lara. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that guy is a wild bull. I love watching him fight. He, uh, he's coming off a, a three-round shootout with our friend uh, Emilio Sanchez, yeah. Yeah, yeah they went and, and back kudos, and forth. Yeah, kudos to Emilio for making that shootout what it was. Yeah. But, uh, hey, trading punches with, with uh, Lara, not a good idea. There's a, there's a lot of good fighters at Featherweight. Mauricio Lara, who went overseas across the pond to win a belt. Yep, and Leo Santa Cruz, if he can still make 126 pounds, the WBA recognized. Wait, Leo Santa has a belt at 126? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the WBA. Wait, but he, he fights at 130. I know, he hasn't fought at Featherweight in oh. like two or three years, but the WBA still recognizes him, oh, so geez. it is what it is. I thought we're cleaning up the WBA. That's boxing. That's boxing. All right, anyway, I'll leave that one alone. Yeah. That's for your mailbag. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Ruben Villa. Okay, here, Doug. Mark Magsayo. 
Oh, yeah. What about him? Yep, the WBC title holder. He uh, relieved that green belt from uh, long reigning uh, Gary Russell. Gary Russell Jr., which was, uh, that was a huge upset. I think Magsaya was like a eight to one or nine yep. to one underdog. Big dog. And he's gonna fight um, Ray Vargas in a couple of months. That's a difficult fight. Oh, Ray Vargas went up to 126. Yeah, yeah, he was a 122 pound title holder, just like Navarrete is, uh, was. And um, Ray, Vargas, Ray is, Vargas is real difficult because he's tall, rangy, and he's a stick and move. Yeah, stick and move. 5'11". Stuff. And he's tough, he's rugged. Yeah, the 126 pound division is good. Ruben Villa trying to climb his way back into it. An impressive performance so far through five. Villa is showing us a little bit of everything in the first half of this 10 rounder. Whoa! Wow. Impressive finish to that round five. They're gonna stop the time and check out Horacio Garcia after he takes some big yeah. shots at the end of the round. Yeah, a bunch of huge lead lefts. These left hands landing flush upside the head of Garcia. R Ruben is feeling so good and his timing is so on point, he doesn't even suck these left hands up with jabs. And they're gonna keep it going. Ruben Villa is not even sitting down between rounds. He's standing up. Oh, he's feeling it. He's feeling good. Ray Vargas against Mark Masayo. Imagine that fight. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be like an action-packed fight because Vargas is just a stick-and-move specialist. Although he can mix it up when he wants to. All right. I might, I'm actually, I might actually favor Vargas in that fight. Just, just style-wise, the style matchup is real difficult for Masayo. Violento, give him another round. But I'll be rooting for Max Sile. Great guy. Can Villa step on the gas here in the sixth round? He's in cruise control, dominating this fight. The unofficial scorecard. Doug Fisher has a shutout. I didn't even look at it. Yeah, not hard to score. And now you see Garcia just starting to wing punches. Desperation mode for the Mexican fighter from Guadalajara. Now, Villa, only five stoppages in his 17 fights. As he gets older, you get to start seeing the man muscles. Are we going to see that from him? He's only, he just turned four, uh, 24, right? Yep. Yeah, he's, he's still young, and he probably is still growing. His body looks great, well, physically speaking. It's like uh, it's the right kind of muscle. He needs quick twitch muscle. Garcia is not even reacting, not even countering. Sloppy is what Austin Garcia. I haven't seen him like this in a long, ever. Yeah, well, V is making him look sloppier than he is. Yeah, I think he, I think you mentioned it earlier. Right there. Yeah, but I just he's just he's so dialed in and he's seeing everything. It's like Garcia is moving in slow motion. That's what he should be doing, countering Garcia. But one, two from Villa. It's hit with Villa. Body work from Villa. Garcia covering up. A lot of that is hitting glove, or Garcia's keeping his hands really high yeah. on I, that guard. I like that, that Villa attacked the body while he was backing Garcia up to the ropes. This is just a complete breakdown by Ruben Villa, snapping back ahead of Garcia. Yeah, it's not just a, a technical domination, it's, it's also physical. He is imposing himself on Garcia at this point in the fight. And he's, and he's set a really fast pace. 
Yes, I mean, he it, did. It's, it's a high volume attack, which is impressive for a guy that is, you know, primarily known as, as a pure technician. Splitting the guard. Another strong round from Ruben Pia. Doctor in the corner now for Garcia, for referee Raul Caiz Jr. in there, keeping a close eye. Yeah, this has been such a domination from Villa, it wouldn't surprise me if Garcia's corner uh, kept him on the stool. Maybe not this round, but maybe after this round. I'll ask the corner, as we're sitting right next to the red corner, and Garcia taking his time getting up. Hey, get let me hit this. All right, his corner, I asked him, what'd you tell him? He's like, if he doesn't throw, I'm gonna stop it for Garcia. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I mean, right now he's being dominated to the point where it's complete bewilderment. It's like he's dizzy. It's the seventh round. Complete domination from Ruben Diaz. He comes back to the boxing scene. Look at the swelling, yep. the swelling of uh, Garcia's face. Impressive evening from Ruben Villa. You know, when that, I saw the name Barroso Garcia, I'm like, ooh, that's a tough out. I, I was thinking the same thing. Not many people would take that. They jumped at it. I was thinking this is a dangerous opponent for a guy who's been out of the ring for 18, 18 months and had faced like a, 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 a big, strong pressure fighter in his previous bout that he yep. lost. Woo! Uh, there's, uh, he's not, there's no, um, what's the word? There was no. Uh, he took his will from him, Doug. Yeah. But also Garcia is a yeah. fighter that's game all the time. This is just halfway through the seventh round. But from on Ruben's side, there's just there was no doubts. It was like they, he, he took his loss well. This is what this shows us. Oh, well, here's a name, Benado Lopez. You know, wins over Andy Vences, Dave Flores. Oh yeah, that's a guy that uh, we've been beaten like uh, 2019 or 2018. Yep. 2019, I think. And Benado, and he's and that, his career. All he's done is win yep. and kick butt since then. Yeah, I think he's he's on a, a eight and zero run, including three fighters who were unbeaten. Yeah. And Vences, who was once beaten. Yeah. And Caiz might be stepping in on this one. You just don't see. Via outclass Garcia. Yeah, Garcia is just too I mean, tough for his own good. Yeah, the fight's over. Yeah. This is just a matter of time. I mean, like, I respect Velasco Garcia. Guy is tough. It's just as Ruben Villa progresses, will he have that one hitter quitter power? No. Will he no. develop some power? You know, but he knows what he is. And he is a, uh, a technician, a Southpaw technician with dizzying skills. That'll do and it he's, for he's seven. In excellent condition. Hey, throwing up, is the corner gonna keep it going? I don't think they should. Yeah. It just there's, there's no point. They told him you need to keep throwing. He did throw that round, but I mean when you have 41 fights in your back pocket. They're not even talking to that corner, they're just working on the eye. 
Yeah, the 126 pound division is good. Well, Via, Via is showing us that he's a player. Doctors but. are talking with Kaiz. I think they want to stop it. Doctor just instructed something to roll Kaiz Jr. Maybe they're going to give Garcia one more round. Let's see. Hey, is la ultima? Yeah, I just asked him, is this the last one? He said, yeah. yeah. It should be. And the corner has a towel in hand with the commission right next to him. So they're... It's a bloody towel, let yep. me tell you. It's not white anymore. Yep. And the commission is right next to the trainer. So right, that's happening right in front of us. But this is an excellent performance by Ruben Villa. As he is just completely dominating this fight. Looking sharp. Looking clean. I don't think I mentioned Beto. This is the first time I've seen Via fight live. You're right. I am, and he's more impressive live, but maybe this is a case of uh, a loss making a fighter better. Well, we'll ask him that in the interview. After the fight, we'll be interviewing the winner. Very game, a very brave. Horacio Garcia, but he has too much. Ruben Villa, work, right there, that footwork bouncing around. It's the eighth round. Villa's throwing a bunch of punches. Look how fresh he is. He doesn't look tired at all. He's barely taking any punishment. He's so good at slipping shots or blocking shots. And, and what I'm impressed by is he stays right in the pocket. Yep. Very, he's very settled down, and it's, his feet are, are just as busy as his fists. All right, our good friend Luki, Luki Boxing, I was on his podcast, says, Ruben <laughs> is special, looking as good as ever. Mr. Boxing Guru checking in, and Garcia finally lands a shot. Hello, Sal. We miss your podcast. <laughs> One of the smartest guys out there when he wants to be. Yeah, when he wants to be. And this is just a complete Ruben Villa domination if you just join us right now. Shout out to all the people doing their boxing podcasts. Doing the work. Might have one listener or a thousand, it doesn't matter. Respect to you putting in the work. You were just on one right now, weren't you? I've, I've been on a bunch of podcasts. Oh, this week, weren't you? <laughs> Was I? <laughs> Final seconds of the eighth. Will Garcia's corner let it go another one? He threw punches. He did. He contended. Oh, his glove. His glove ripped. Garcia's glove, he has a tear in his glove. Oh, he has a tear. Is it an Adidas glove? <laughs> if it's a tear, is it Adidas? Uh, Box Talk 101, what's happening? Yeah, they might have to uh, bring in a replacement glove. John Santoyo, what's up, John? It's There's a, your shout out. It's an Everlast glove. So, what happened? Okay, so Kaiz is talking to Ruin Villa's corner. Yeah, he's informing them that uh, there's a, a glove malfunction or a glove, a damaged glove, and they're going to have to replace that. And a shout out to Ellie Segback, ES News. <laughs> does Man. a great job. He hustles. Boxer, hustling. <laughs> so they're going to fix that glove. It's uh, after 11 o'clock. Also, Marco Villegas. He hustles. He does. All those YouTubers hustle. You yeah. got to hustle. If you're a, if you're a quote unquote content creator, yeah. you got to create content every day. Yep. And it's, also, a hustle. Uh, it's a grind. Our boy Salazar, coach, teacher, executive, Francisco Salazar, great yep. writer. He's here tonight. Yeah, he's here tonight covering boxing. As is. Uh, 
Miguel Maravilla. Yeah, Miguel Maravilla, he's here. Yeah, for Fight News. Like 11 o'clock crowd and make some noise behind us. Yeah, I, I don't think they know what's going on. No. <laughs> They're like, what, what's happening? Hey, Guru, by the way, uh, I know you live in uh, Pomona, so I'll be on my way home. Make sure you have a nice IPA waiting for me. Like, you're right. Do they need to call this fight? I would say yes. But if Horacio Garcia is still willing to fight, his corner's willing to fight, you replace the glove, and there it is. Christian, my cell phone is 10% left. You're right. Jose Turibio, Spanish radio show in uh, Salinas. It's the Deportes. Saludos a usted. John Santoyo. Hey, man, we might be 616, but we're strong, bro. And we appreciate you checking in right now. Vader, 7 a.m., where are you? All right, so they said last round they would give one more if he didn't throw. But Asha Garcia gets a new glove. It is Everlast, by the way. It was the Everlast glove that ripped. It happens. Yeah. We're in the ninth round, scheduled for 10. Abrams boxing. Abrams still watching us right now. What is it? Two in the morning? That's dedication. Philadelphia. Respect. I interviewed uh, Gabriel Zada the other day, and he was talking about the Blue Horizon in Philadelphia. He said, people smoking their Newports in there. You got to earn your way. <laughs> Get that menthol burn yep. in your lungs. <laughs> Ninth round. It's been all Ruben Villa. Garcia threw some punches last round. Corner saw enough to let him go. Isaac Zarate, who fought Horacio twice, said he's a warrior. Isaac wouldn't know. Isaac with the gym in San Pedro. And there's Ruben, and Caiz jumps in and stops it. Raul Caiz Jr. stops the fight. And the ninth round, Ruben Villa. There you go. That's got to feel good. Yep. Not just coming back with the victory, but getting the stoppage. Especially for a guy who's not used to getting the stoppage. You know, I'm sure he appreciates having a, another knockout on his ledger. Yeah, so Ruben Villa gets his sixth stoppage. Port Fort goes to the middle of the ninth. Thank you, Raul Caiz Jr., for jumping in there and stopping this fight. Rosho. He's game, he's battle, but tonight it was all Ruben Villa. We'll be back with the decision. No, what are we gonna do? Uh, we'll just keep on talking, all right. Now, if you're a Ruben Villa fan, do not log off. We're gonna interview him. We're gonna have an interview with Ruben Villa after they do the announcement, so don't go anywhere. Let's see if Ruben shots out the 831. Let's see if he shots out the salad bowl. So he gets the victory tonight. He's now 19 and one. All right. Orastro Garcia did not go down, but he did get stopped. And it was uh, all Ruben Villa completely controlling and cutting him up. Sonny Franco. The ladies and gentlemen, the end comes. One minute, 12 seconds of round number nine. Referee Raul Caiz Jr. puts a stop to this contest, declaring your winner by way of a knockout from Salinas, California, Drac, Ruben Bia! All right, don't go anywhere. Quick commercial. And then we have the interview with Ruben Bia.
Discover the advantages of the Henry Fortifiber 123 Moisture